Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Just decided to start that one out with a little mood music. All right, so uh, I'm making this video here to help demonstrate you know, how to apply or how to draw free body diagrams and apply Newton's uh, second law. So what we're looking at here, we've got this rocket ship. And in this problem, we're gonna imagine that this rocket here has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. It's not a particularly big rocket. Um, we got this young lad here uh, riding the rocket here named Timmy looking out the window. Everybody waved to Timmy. And in this example, we're going to imagine that this rocket is accelerating up at 7 meter per second per second. And we're going to try to calculate a couple of things. One, we're going to try to calculate the thrust produced by the rocket. And then two, we're going to try to calculate uh, what I call W sub T here and put in parentheses, uh, Timmy's apparent weight in the rocket. like. If Timmy were standing on a bathroom scale while he was in this rocket, what would that scale read? All right, so we're going to take these uh, one at a time. First of all, <clears throat> let's uh, let's talk about the rocket. So I'm, I'm going to draw a free body of the rocket. So to do that here, I'm going to need another picture of it. And if we think about the forces acting on the rocket, let's start with this gravitational force acting down equal to mg. Now this is a free body of the rocket. So this m here, I should put a little m sub r on it. It's the rocket's mass. Now technically we could say it's the mass of the entire system here, but the 60 kilograms is not uh, that significant compared to the thousand. I'm just going to use a thousand kilograms for uh, when we calculate that force. All right. Now the rocket in this example is accelerating up and I tried to demonstrate that with these pictures. See how this distance and then this distance, the second one is larger and the next distance would be larger yet and so forth. All right? And that's because the rocket engine when it's on, it's shooting gas out the bottom and it produces an upward force on that rocket. And that's sometimes called, uh, or that's the force I'm calling the thrust in this example. I'm gonna put uh, T here for thrust. You'll notice I drew this force vector larger than this one. That's because the rocket's accelerating up, and therefore the net force must be up, and therefore this force must be bigger than this one. Now, we're going to ignore air drag for this uh, example, uh, and we're going to assume these are pretty much the only two uh, forces acting on that rocket. All right, next we apply Newton's second law, which is net, f net force equals mass times acceleration. Now, remember, Newton's second law is a vector law. Now, what do we mean by net force? We mean the sum of all forces acting. And I'm going to be applying this law in the upward direction. Remember, Newton's second law is a vector law, which means you, you apply it by direction. You have to define a direction to call positive. My standard rule of thumb for writing Newton's second law equations is identify the acceleration direction if you can call that positive. I know the rocket is accelerating up. That's why I'm calling up positive. Now when we write our force equation here, we've got the tension up, gravitational force down. So the net force is going to be T minus mg. Keep in mind that this mass is for the rocket. I'm going to put a sub r there. So here's an expression that's good for the net force acting on the rocket. Now by Newton's second law, that's going to equal mass times acceleration. And again, this mass is going to be the mass of the rocket. So here's our Newton's second law equation now from our free body. Now we're going to ask ourselves, you know, what is it we're trying to find here? Uh, well, in this case, we're trying to find the thrust of the rocket. That's the force I call T. So this can be solved for T easy enough by adding this term to the right. We're going to have m sub r g plus m sub r times a. And now I can put in numbers and calculate a value. I'm not going to bother writing the numbers. I'll let the reader do that or the whoever's watching the video. I'm going to try to keep this a little shorter. And when I calculate a value, um, I get about 1,680 newtons. Oops, I got a feeling that, oops, got missed a zero there. I'm sorry, 16,800 newtons. There we go. Or, or let's just say approximately 17,000 newtons upwards. So this rocket is producing a thrust of about 17,000 newtons uh, to accelerate this rocket upward. All right, next <clears throat> we're going to look for Timmy's apparent weight. It's a very similar problem really. I need a little room here so I'm going to take this and scale that down but leave it 
where we can observe it. And now, to get the uh, weight of Timmy, that's a force acting on Timmy, so let's start with this. That's why I already had that sitting over here. So here's a picture of Timmy sitting inside this rocket, or I should say standing inside this rocket. Let's start putting forces on Timmy. So the first one we're going to consider here is the gravitational force down. Usually calculate that by mg, and again, this mass is going to be Timmy's mass. Now, I always give people this advice. Forces come in two types, field and contact forces. In a typical first semester physics course, gravity is the only field force uh, that you deal with. All other forces are coming from direct physical contact. In this case, presumably Timmy is standing on the, on the some sort of surface in the rocket. So there's forces applied here at Timmy's feet. Those forces are going to be upward. And those are what we would typically call normal forces because those uh, forces make a right angle to the surface that Timmy is standing on. Again, I drew this force vector larger than this one because the rocket is accelerating up. Timmy's in the rocket, therefore Timmy also is accelerating up, and therefore this force must be bigger than this force. Now you'll notice that this thrust force here that we calculated does not appear in this free body, and it shouldn't because that thrust is acting on the rocket. It's not directly acting on Timmy. As the rocket accelerates, what that does is that increases this normal force uh, acting on Timmy. Now you'll also notice this normal is not in a free body of the rocket. Right? That's because within this system, this normal would be an internal force. Even if I tried to include it, it would be upward on Timmy, downward on the floor of the rocket, and the net force would be zero. All right, so here's my completed free body of Timmy. I'm going to go ahead and write my Newton's second law equation. Sum of all forces equals ma. Again, up positive because Timmy's accelerating upward. So when we uh, look at these two forces, we're going to have n minus mg. Now keep in mind that mass is Timmy's mass. There's an expression for the net uh, force acting on Timmy equals ma. And again, that's got to be Timmy's mass at that point. So the normal force, let's see, we'd have to put this term on the right, mass of Timmy times G plus mass of Timmy times A. And we go ahead and put numbers in uh, with using 60 kilograms here and here. And I get, let's see, I get about 1,008 newtons. Thousand, whoops, 1,008 newtons of force um, for the normal force between Timmy's feet and the ground. Now, as far as answering the question, what is his uh, apparent weight? If you're standing on a bathroom scale, if there were a scale here, the normal, the scale reads the normal force between your feet and the scale. So this is what the scale would read. And therefore, that is what I, what I would call Timmy's uh, apparent weight while accelerating up on the rocket. So again, the uh, purpose of this video is to provide examples of how to draw free body diagrams and apply Newton's second law. Uh, some highlights here. In this case, both the rocket and Timmy have just two forces acting on them, and, and uh, that's why um, there's only two force vectors in both summations. Some other things to point out. You should never, ever, ever have a force listed in your equation that's not in your free body because the equations in the free bodies go hand in hand. The, you know, we're basically drawing the free body to write the equations. So when you write a Newton's second law equation, you start by looking at your free body, then you sum forces in whatever direction uh, you feel appropriate. Just make sure that you're using your free body to write your equations. Right? Hope this video helps demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.